Welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about an unusual way to build muscle that you've probably never tried or even heard about. In the second half of the show, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions such as, what are some of the best landmine exercises? What are the pros and cons of having versus not having a college degree? Finally, Mind Pump Clips. Let that sink in. It's another channel that we have right here on YouTube. Go over there and subscribe and enjoy the rest of the show. Here's a cool way to build muscle. Pick a weight for an exercise that you could do 20 reps for, and then your goal is to fail at 10 reps. In other words, use tempo, <coughs> squeeze, stretch, and focus to make something you do 20 reps with something you can only do 10 reps with. Watch what happens. Love this strategy. Isn't this great? Especially for somebody who is just getting started too. It, just to put more emphasis on the form than you're always just loading it. You know, People forget that you can progressively overload the body many different ways. It's not always just adding more weight to the exercise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes dramatically slowing it down, you get an incredible workout. Less damaging and a totally different type of stimulus, which uh, you know still promotes uh, you towards that same desired outcome. Yeah, so. no, I mean, I actually, I like this for, yes, I like it for beginners, but I also love it for people who are advanced because at some point as you get stronger and stronger and stronger, the risk versus reward ratio starts to change Catches with the amount of, yeah, the weight that you can lift. And um, I did this the other day. I, I took a weight that I said, okay, I know I could do 20 reps with this. And, and the goal is, can I make it so that the 10th rep is like, <coughs> I, I can't do another rep. And so mm -hmm. it's literally, as I'm doing each rep, like I start with the first one, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is too light to do 10. So the second rep, I'm like, slow, squeeze, stretch, pause. And you can adjust this as you get closer to the 10th rep. And it's great because you use less weight, you do better form and technique, and you and you have better focus throughout the set. And you're, you're just, in, you're exactly what you said, Adam, you're progressively overloaded without having to add weight. In fact, you took weight off the bar. Mm -hmm. I love to do this too when I'm feeling too lazy to change the weight. Yeah. <laughs> I swear it is to a good God. hack. I yeah. swear to God, I just did it the other day. The other day, I was like, I wasn't even motivated to lift. I'm like, I need to get in the gym. And I'm like, oh, I need to set the squat rack up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm like, okay. So I got under there and I'm like, I put 135 on for squats, which is obviously really light. Uh, and I'm like, I just don't want to, I don't want to get up and add it. My 45s are up high on my thing. I'm like, I don't even want to add it. <laughs> It's slow. Yeah. I, while did. You're, I did. While you're working out, I did. I don't, I don't want to move less. Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny you say that. Though. That was like my go-to, especially when I was like training clients in like the really busy times, yes. like twenty-four hour. I'd yes. be like, I only have access to these dumbbells, yeah. and maybe this one machine, and I have this one corner, like I basically can use. So I have to like be as effective as possible. So I had to pull out all those tricks, like with tempo and with angles, and just trying to make things a little bit more. Difficult and challenging. Yeah, or pause, so I can isometric stuff. I mean, yeah. I, that's I can make that one thirty five. I got a great workout. My legs were hella sore, you know. So I could. I just literally just did this the other day. I just did not. This feel is like a, this is a good skill to develop. If you're if you want to work out for a long period of time, you know, for maybe the rest of your life, this is I would consider this an essential skill. Because what are you going to do otherwise? Keep adding weight. Keep pushing. The load, uh, at some point, that becomes detrimental. I, I know it sounds like I'm being completely lazy, and I'm half that's half true. Uh, but th there is, like, part of the logic behind that is, like, you know, oh, I don't feel like putting any more weight on board. I'm like, right away, the thought that comes to mind is, oh, when was the last time I did 135 on squats and did some pause and hold the bottom or come halfway up, pause again, then finish. Like, exactly. Like, I, I'll just, I haven't done that in a while. I'm like, oh, I don't feel like putting any more weight on the bar. This is a good day to do that. I'm going to do that. And so I think just think there's a lot of uh, a merit to that. And it's not something that I would normally do, but I did. I just recently did this. So yeah. I, one of my like tip. One of my favorite ways to do this, obviously you could slow the reps down. That's an easy way to do it. But one of my other uh, pausing has got to be my favorite way mm -hmm. to make a weight feel much heavier. And what I'll do is I'll pause usually in the hardest parts of the rep. Yep. So like with a squat, it's like at the bottom. And I'm not sitting on my on my heels uh, and resting down there. I'm holding it at the bottom and creating tension. And if you do squats and you hold the bottom for five seconds, that weight feels exponentially heavier. And then with yeah. a deadlift, I'll pause, like I'll pull it off the floor, five or six inches, pause there, and then finish the lift. Oh my God. Like 200 pounds feels like 500 pounds when I do Dude, it. Dude, that's my go-to anytime it's been a long period of time I haven't um, addressed certain lifts. Like for right now, um, 
a front loaded squat is something I haven't done in quite a while. So I don't want to load it substantially, but I also want to start really getting my body to get in the groove that yeah. I used to be able to get into. And so I'll pause at the, the hardest parts of the lift and I'll really like take my time tensing up my body and feeling my way back to being able to stabilize it properly and go through proper range of motion and all that. So, uh, but I still get a good workout out of it, even though I have like light weight and, and it helps me to bring myself back. One of the, one of the sets that I did, I actually, I took like a five, five, six second negative real slow with 135 pause at the bottom for about three seconds and then actually try to come up explosively. So like I built that and I think I did like five reps and I was roasted oh, yeah. after that. Just going that slow on the way down. I'm so glad you said that. Pausing it, for a second yes. and then like trying to explosively come out. Like obviously I'm not going to move the weight that explosive. It's still 135 on back. But just the thought of trying to explosively move out like with that kind of weight. Oh. I'm so glad you said yeah. that because I didn't even, uh, obviously that's, you can make, you can lift a lightweight faster and dramatically increase the intensity. This is much more advanced, right? This is power. So you got to have good stability and control. But the first time I experienced this, I took uh, my, I used to have a business partner. When I first started my personal training business, I had a business partner for a short period of time. And we took a pair of light dumbbells and a kettlebell to the park. And we're like, let's do explosive, like th let's throw these weights, you know, let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, So, we, doing that. so we, instead of like, you know, like one arm dumbbell shoulder press, you know, I, I don't know at the time, I'm sure I could have done 80 pounds or something like that. We had a 20 pound dumbbell. And it was literally, let's see who can launch it the furthest. And so it's 20 pounds, but you're pushing it with so much effort that you generate a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad you said that because speed can also, you know, and that's how Olympic lifters lift, right? They, they'll use a lighter weight, but try to lift it as fast as possible in a particular part of the rep. And that gener generates tremendous, that really activates those fast switch muscle fibers. It'll build muscle as well. It's more advanced because you have to be stable. But. Yeah, I mean, I got sore. I got, I got plenty sore from a, a workout of moving 135 just for four sets. I mean, that's all I did of it. And it was enough to get me. And so I, I definitely think that, I mean, originally I said that this is my favorite for beginners. So I absolutely love it. And the reason why I loved it with beginners was it's already difficult to get a client to, to, to keep their form yeah. when, when they're moving weight. If you challenge them weight wise to where it's hard for them to move that weight, say five or 10 or 12 times, then it's even harder to get them to, to keep the form. Whereas if I put on a load, that's like 50% of that weight that they could do say 10 or 15 reps. Well, now it's really light for them. And then I teach them how to make it you know, more difficult by slowing it down, but then it also gives me that opportunity to to move their posture and get them in a position. But to your point, like you said, absolutely, advanced lifters. I just used it just recently, um, where I'll I'll manipulate that. I think it's a, a a great tip and great technique. Yeah, give it a try, see what happens. Here's the giveaway for today's episode: Maps OCR Obstacle Course Racing Program, and I'm going to give away Maps Cardio. This is an endurance training program, so they both go very well together. I'm going to give them both away for free because they're on sale right now. But before I get to that, here's how you can win them for free. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Uh, turn on notifications um, and make it a good comment. Also subscribe to this channel. Do all those things. If we like your comment and we think you should win, we'll notify you in the comment section that you got those two programs for free. Now, everyone else, MAPS OCR, MAPS Cardio, both 50% off. You can find them both by clicking on the link at the top of the description below and you'll get the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, so I had some interesting speculations and thoughts this morning. In fact, I almost started a conversation with Justin because we were both here oh, a little early. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? Let me hold this for the podcast because this is really- Props to you for holding out. Usually yeah. I just have to come out with it. You know? I know. <laughs> I, I did. I felt really like, I just, you know, not realizations, but I just had some thoughts around something. So Japanese scientists have identified a compound now, don't get all everybody get excited. It was done in mice, but still, I'm sure that at some point we'll figure this out. They found a compound that, given to mice, the mice didn't have to do anything different. They didn't have to do any exercise. Oh, didn't have boy. To do, oh, here we go. They built muscle, and they got leaner. Okay? So, you know, of course, the news picks it up. And it's like, oh, exercise and a pill and all that stuff. And I Is think it's- the actual myostatin inhibitor? It's Well, I think it's, it's going to be way more complex than, you know, the, the whole process of- making yourself more fit and stronger and leaner is way more complex than people, um, I think, appreciate. Yeah. So who knows when this real exercise in a pill that gives you the health, fitness benefits, all that stuff. But at some point, 
I think this will exist at some point. How di- okay? How different is is that than because uh, testosterone would show this too, right? Nick? It can, didn't you? Didn't you talk about you tout yes. a study all the time that sh- that showed the three different groups? One of the groups that did no exercise and just took limited t- though, just just testosterone yep. saw building muscle and burning body fat. Yeah, so-, so lean body mass will go up. You'll lose a little body fat, but then it's done. Like you have to then continue to exercise to keep seeing more you know, results, more muscle growth, more fat loss and stuff like that. So I don't think limited. we're ever going to find it. So my stance is we won't. You guys think that we will. I don't think we will. I think. I don't th- you still have to promote the work? That's the, that's the reason that's why the you thing. won't because that, it's a response, right? Yeah. The, the building of muscle is an adaptation response to your body trying to basically defend itself. So the idea that you can take a pill to to get the body to do that is to chemically produced. Yeah. That. I don't it's think, a, I don't think so because yeah. it's, I don't think it's a, I, I, so here, so here, okay. So I think at some point we will be able to, because we'll be able to identify the signaling process that exercise produces in the body. Now, is it complex? Mm. It's super complex. Obviously. So I'm not saying this will happen in 10 years or even 20 or 30 years, <clears throat> but at some point, uh, especially with AI learning and biomedicine, all that stuff. It'll That's be like a nanobot pill. Something. I yeah. think at some point they'll figure out, oh, do this, and we'll be able to trigger the response in the body because we figure, but it's it's a long way from now. But my my point with this is at some point we'll figure this out. What is what what do you guys think gyms and workouts are gonna look like when this finally exists? So let's just speculate. Let's speculate there is a exercise hmm. and diet in a pill. So you take it. And it's equivalent to working out three days a week and eating, you know, relatively healthy diet. It would just I go- would imagine it'd be more of like a fun experience, like place almost like, like a place to test your new skills, right? Mm-hmm. Like so, so if you have this like new able body that's strong and um, and you have to acclimate to it, it's almost like is like a video game where it's like now, um, I'm I'm gonna. Maybe it's like you get in a room and then you, you do like X amount of exercises in there and just test your skills. And because, like, who, like, at that point, what does it matter? Like, so that's, yeah. I don't think so. So, you know what I think? I think it would revert back to the 70s and all these gyms would pretty much, for the most part, go away. All the money would follow the, the, the supplement industry that, pro, pro, you know, provides this thing that people don't have or to exercise more. Industry. And the only people that would be exercising are the actual people that truly love the journey and that have now made that connection and attached that. So it would shrink down again to the size mm-hmm. of what it was in the 70s where you'd have these little tiny garage gyms that a small community of people that go there and they would be the, the weird outcast I, people who <laughs> like to work out when you could just take a pill. I I agree with you, but I, I, I do agree with that. But I do think that fitness will take on more of a spiritual component. And what I mean by that is not like it's like you're what? worshiping it. Well, no, explain. let me explain. We're so godless. That ain't happening. Yeah, no, 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 no. That, not like you're- We're going the opposite direction. No, 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 no. What I, what I like mean by- Like a personal growth yes, journey. Like, yes, yes. Mm, like yeah. you're going to have a bunch of fitness people. Doing like, oh, hard things like, just because- Let's just imagine everybody looks, everybody, oh, wow, everybody looks fit because they could take this pill. Yeah. There's still going to be people, kind of like monks- who are going to be like, yeah, but I still do this practice because. Oh, that's what I. I mean, those that's are the, what you mean, like yeah. churning butter. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's what I mean. I think it's going to be more of a spiritual practice and fitness people sure. in, this, in this future. Sure, sure. It's basically going to be like a practice. Like, well, yeah, I go and do this, and yeah, I know I look good, but because here's the deal: people who exercise for long, consistently for long periods of time, they'll tell you the benefits of of exercise are not limited to you're stronger and you're leaner and you move better. Yeah. There's a lot of other benefits that are in that spiritual realm of growth and acceptance and pain and challenge and meditation. That's the minority of the minority. Yes. So it will be it'll be a bell curve, right? We'll be we'll hit the peak of of gyms and and people in them, and then it'll go all the way back down to what it was like at the beginning when it's just this this small, rare group of people that actually work out. That's what I mean. Yeah, too. Like you still have people (laughs) that smoke cigarettes. Right. So there's, a lot of there's that, always so. like the rebellious side of all this stuff. Right. So I'm, I'm just like, I was kind of laughing to myself thinking of like, because bodybuilding was, you know, got to the point where it's, it's extreme, but maybe it's a lot easier to go in that direction, you know, but maybe it's like the, the hard way to do it now is to just like pack on a whole bunch of weight. <laughs> that's just fat, you know, like <laughs> you have like fat building competition. Yeah, I, I just think, I just think people are going to work out. 
and it's not going to be to build muscle and burn body fat if this no, exists. It'll, it'll be only, for a different thing. That's what I mean. It'll be the minority of the minority. Yeah. It'll be the small percentage of people It'll be that like their, their spiritual when practice. you just had that conversation on the podcast the other day, that comment under our Instagram page to say, yes, this is why. There was, that was about 30 people. Okay, so it was yeah. about the, of the millions that listened, that was about 30 people that were like, yes, yeah, Sal, that's why I do it. Okay, well, that percentage of people will still go to these gyms because they've, they've made that connection that it's not just the aesthetics that is why they work now, out. Now, do you think that eventually that that, again, we're all speculating like the future, that it would that the, that you'd have less people working out. Less. And it makes us people, worse. It makes but, us worse people. But then do you, I, I agree with you, but yeah. then do you think at some point people will figure it out and be like, you know what? There's value in like no moving no, and stuff. No, I think we move further away from that. Right now, I feel like there's hope to like get people to understand that the more pills, we have to lure them in the with more, that, right? yeah, the more pills that we have to solve what they think is the root cause or problem, yeah. the less likely they're going to explore all these other things. Like there, there'd be a large, there's a large portion of people that are going to the gym currently right now at this moment that are in there because they're like, I just want to get rid of this fat and I want to look this yeah. way. Yeah, we lured them in, Yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. then it's our job to teach them. Yeah, like all the but other those people yeah. given a pill would be like, fuck this, I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah, why do I yeah. want to go over there? And, and I have no desire there. to look further. I think uh, if you're going to look at the landscape now, like a, an indication of that, if it was to go in the direction you're talking about, so it would be to see if like we are in fact swinging back into more of a religious like quest of people coming back you know in that direction for answers instead of what we've already been going towards if that does happen i would probably lean a it little bit it is more happening there is direction. there seems to be a resurgence of spiritual practices and wisdom you know like stoicism came back like, yeah we'll see i'm like I'm i feel skeptical. like that feels like one of those news articles where you find one thing that correlates with that and then you attach it to like oh look church attendance has been up it's up 15 yeah. percent over the last three years I, yeah i don't have any data because the yeah. data actually supports the opposite yeah I, it just I, feels that way yeah it don't feel that way to me i actually feel the opposite i feel like when you see it being removed from schools you see more i mean when you read the, read the book iGen, it's more and more atheist uh, are here than there were just yeah. two decades ago. So I don't get the sense of this resurgence of, of that at all. I mean, I think of the, it's Dude, the think opposite. About, imagine how dysfunctional, just think about this, how dysfunctional society would be if you literally paid zero consequences for eating garbage. Like, how do you think, how, like, imagine just what that- Pure indulgence. That like imagine the dysfunction that that would produce. Yeah. That'd be a weird, scary. But now you're looking at other like un like related consequences, right? Like what about your teeth health, and what about like all these other like okay, I think vital we have organs and like so it's yeah. I don't but what know. if you got none of that? Yeah, but don't you think don't don't you think we have kind of an example of this right now with technology? We don't have these parameters really set on those, and there's unlimited indulgence of you know pornography and photos and and apps and entertainment and at the yeah. palm of our hand, we're living in an experiment right now, yeah. and we are for the most part, yeah, it's like too much, unrestricted. Like, uh, it's unrestricted. It, you can get you can do as and consume as much as you want. So the only difference is you're talking about food, and they they each have I think they each have different consequences. But nonetheless, I think they both have serious consequences. And I think we have yet to see that completely unfold. Yeah. Right and I, and so, so we're going to see, see that. My son had this thought experiment in his class, and this is what kind of spurred some of this conversation. It's like, um, okay, fine. And imagine, let's imagine a world where there are no, no negative consequences, just eating whatever you want, right? Just eating garbage. At some point, you it would lose all its value, right? You'd be, uh, be like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like, I don't know what to do. So anyway, they did this thought experiment. And they said, okay, well, what's the ultimate value, right? And, you know, one kid said, oh, like feeling good. He's like, okay, cool. So we should just take a, take a bunch of humans and hook them up to heroin and just give them heroin all the time. And he goes, but then they won't know the difference because they don't have a contrast. They have to also know what bad feels like mm -hmm. to feel good. Right. So then he said, the teacher said, well, every once in a while, uh, someone comes along and kicks you in the nuts while you're getting this. So they did this whole thought experiment and they went down the path. And the kid, my son said that it was this great debate because all the kids realized like, Oh shit! It's way more complex than we think. Like you know, we think we want all this stuff, but do we really? And but really, what was, it, what was the main thesis? Like, what's the ultimate? What's the ultimate value? What's the ultimate? What's the top of, thing of what? What's of, what was of life of and the ultimate value? Like how was it presented to the kids? I just I, want. I think it was like that. I think it was something along the lines of like, what's the ultimate value that we should aspire towards? Oh, yeah, and uh, they it turned out to be basically to be able to have the choice to live the way we want. But it started out with a bunch of kids saying, 
you know, oh, feeling good and avoiding pain and ha not having challenges and not having struggles. And so the teacher like <laughs> takes them down that path. All right. And they realize like, oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, that's... wait, those do have value. Yeah. And, you know? and, yeah. It helps to kind of like enhance those other traits that you're mentioning. Yeah. What kind of class was that? You know? Oh, God. He's, I think it was. Philosophy? No, I want to say it was one of his literature classes and. They'll do like a segment, like a tight, like I think right now he's doing post-apocalyptic. I don't remember. It's like a, cl like a category of, of books that are in this category and he's reading them and it spurred this like conversation. Mm. It's really cool though. Cause he reads these books that I've never read that I've wanted to read. So now I just get to like ask him. <laughs> he's like cliff my cliff notes. notes. Yeah. Oh yeah. What half is that book? So what's the deal about that? <laughs> Filter it for yeah. me, son. Yeah. This is what I'm paying Give for. Give me the meat of it. Uh, I know. Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty That's, cool. That is cool. So um, more cool science. I just read this, Justin. I don't know if you heard about this, hmm. but they have figured out, I got to pull this up because it was really hard for me to kind of make sense of. They have figured out a way to transmit so much information through a single laser and a, and a computer chip or a chip yeah. that they could literally transmit the whole internet in less than a second. So Stop this is a it. new record Stop for it. how fast Through we can transfer. laser? Yes. So, okay. so, so this is- uh, Makes this, my head hurt just thinking yeah, about the, the, the ability the, of that. So okay. check this I out. Some, I have some thoughts. Go ahead. So the ability to transmit information, and we have like, we can test it and see what the records are, what the world records are, right? So right. the latest world record is literally so fast, it's crazy. So using a single laser and a single optical chip, researchers were able to transmit 1.8, petabits per second. Okay. So to tell you guys what that is, one petabit is the same as 1 million gigabyte, gigabytes. And, and that amount of information is equivalent of transmitting twice the global internet traffic. And so they were able to do this. Insanely large. Now that doesn't mean that they were transmitting, like it was just pure information. Yeah. But, so weird. but they can direct it in, in sh with a laser guided directive yeah. of information. That's yeah. so, okay. So, this is where like that half of that stuff that just seems so out there and wild, like people speculate, um, like even the sun and like the rays of, of light being um, some kind of information that gets transmitted um, to us. Like this is some weird way out there, wild stuff, but like think oh, about, interesting. if you think about like how it too, even with, with crystal and people are really into crystals, all this stuff, like they, they talk about it being a, a natural way to store a information. information. Energy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, and then traveling through space, they, didn't they, they send out like this, this gold like record. Oh, 1970. I think it was two or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like even Carl Sagan was part of that, right? And like they he, have a yeah, dude. You, it's so it's so funny to me. We sent out this rocket. I don't know if it was the Voyager. I don't remember. What, maybe Doug, you could look it up. I think it just left our solar system, if I'm not mistaken, recently. Oh, it's been really? flying forever. Oh, yeah, forever. Super, out. super high speeds. And we put on there a gold. This was the technology at the time, right? Yeah. So it was a record, but yeah. it was gold because that lasts the longest and whatever. And on there, we use mathematical equations so that alien civilizations, if they find it, mm -hmm. could locate Earth. We have- <laughs> They could understand our, our rules, laws. Yeah. And, like music was on there, noises from nature, from babies crying. Oh, there it is. It's the Voyager Golden Record. Doug, what, what was on? There's also like a picture of a man and a woman on there. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is before we decided. Yeah, that look at the back. There's way more than that. It's like 1977. 77. So, mm -hmm. and, so, and literally we put, because we think that math is the universal language, right? Of the universe. Yeah. So we put on there. And then when you think about it, like, why would you do this? It flies out into space. Alien civilization finds it. We're giving them a map. Hey, come find us. We're, we're, here. <laughs> we're located here. And then they look at it and they're Take like, us. and they're yeah, looking at it. They're primitive. Like, they're like, oh, this is their technology records in a rocket. <laughs> exactly. Let's go we'll kick their ass real quick. <laughs> no, that or we'll, <laughs> we'll skip up shop. We'll skip these guys. <laughs> What's on there, Doug? I know that there's like, there's like, uh, they say hello in all, almost every major world uh, language. 55 ancient and modern languages. Uh, Boy, there's other sounds like footsteps, laughter, inspirational messages, music, all types of different things. And there's Wind, also thunder, animals. <laughs> there's also a printed message from the current U.S. president at the time, Jimmy Carter. We picked one of our worst presidents. Yeah. <laughs> Him of all guys, cool. Know, yeah. You know, when I, I hear something like this, worse. I'm always so I'm so curious to like, what was the budget to do this thing? 
Like how much? How many millions of oh, dollars did we spend? Oh yeah, like it's for, we just hey. threw, just threw some gold out. In the you know what? You know what's funny about this? Yeah. So everybody's like, NASA is this wonderful thing that you know the government did just for scientific exploration. No, we 100 percent used it as a way to flex. During the Cold War. Big time. So we, we said the space race, right? Who can get to the moon first? Yeah. We didn't give a shit about going to the moon. We just know that yeah. if we show the Soviets, we yeah. can fly the moon. Once the president said we're doing it, we yeah. have to. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. also, if we land on the moon, we could park a nuke in your backyard if we want to from here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's literally what it was. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, for the betterment flex. of humanity yeah. or whatever. It was <laughs> no. To show who's got the most power. Yeah. And got, we spent a lot of money. Who's got the biggest that? rocket? $250 million. Yeah. For Damn, that? back then, too. That's in 1970. 1972. What would that translate today? Uh, <laughs> a lot. Well, <laughs> yes. I mean, 25 trillion. You know, are you talking about yesterday or today? What? It's yeah. 200. Yeah. 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 That's changed dramatically yeah, yeah, yeah. in the last yeah. day. By the time this episode airs, I, that's 1972. 250 million dollars. 77, I think. Oh no, 72. Yeah. Yeah. 250 million dollars back then. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. That's gonna be like a billion. Yeah, probably. Close it's like a billion dollar project. Oh, probably it's gotta close be to a billion, right? Yeah. It's gotta yeah. be. I would think. What a great, oh yeah, probably well over. Well, oh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the bare, bare minimum, it's a billion. Oh, what can we do with that besides like make a put, throw out a gold record? With, I mean, we're just I mean, throwing that, trillions out now, so what's the big deal? <laughs> that that's a lot back then, though. That's a lot. Of, I'm I'm curious. I want to see what the calculation is. That oh, you're doing it, Doug. Come and on, I'm pretty sure this. that the, the that the what does that say? One okay, billion. so it's like seven x. Oh my god, seven bro! X. Wow. Hold so on. that's a that's almost, billions almost of dollars. Two billion dollars worth Woo. of. Uh, wow, that's crazy. That's insane. Money well spent, you know. Well, but, you know, it made work, guys. You know, yeah. just think positively. Now, the Voyager left our solar system, I think, right, Doug? Did we oh. s we sent it out? Look it up. So it, does that mean we can no longer track it? It's gone. It left. It's the first human-made anything. I mean, you think it's gone? That's left. <laughs> <laughs> what did that say? Well, is Elon's uh, car still out there flying around? Oh wait, hold on. In, in August 2012, Voyager One became the first spacecraft to cross into interstellar space. However, if we define our solar system as the sun and everything that primarily orbits the sun, Voyager One will remain within the confines of the solar system until it emerges from the what is that? The Oort cloud. <laughs> the Oort cloud. And, oh, it's it's only another fourteen thousand to twenty eight thousand years. Sounds like it's in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. Hey. By the wow. way, weird stuff on that. Did you know the oldest? Do you guys want to know the oldest battery? Ever found? Yeah, the Baghdad battery. So do you think the it's theory like thousands of years old? Yeah. What the hell? So you think the theory so of why why powerful, you do a project yeah. like this? Do you think the reason why you do a project like this is more or less not to find some aliens across the solar system, but more so because it's supposed to return to us that because there's some people that theorize that we've been here, we've done this before, and we just keep we just we build up, we get smarter, smarter, smarter until we're too smart for ourselves, and we yeah, destroy ourselves. I, I think there's some truth. Then to we that. start over, and that's kind of like that. We, that's our perpetual cycle. So maybe the strategy it finally inevitably just implodes. That finally, this 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 generation decides that they're going to send they're going to send this out in case we are on pace to do that again. And so this the new civilization gets this in in eighteen thousand years or whatever. That's some Planet of the Apes shit right there. Right yeah, now, what? Are we going no, like, to focus no, lasers gonna, at, at what? planets? What say, Doug? I was just going to say the, the only that wasn't the only mission of the Voyager to get the golden record out there. So well, they were doing uh, close up studies of Jupiter and Saturn and Saturn's rings and the larger real I'm, real important. Stuff. I'm telling you well, right now, 100. I mean, yeah. cool. This the all, the funding the the government funding they got public funding for this because they said space it's great exploration but really. Mm -hmm. We had to develop the technology to be able to launch rockets from here to wherever we want mm -hmm. with, you know, with intercontinental ballistic missiles. That's how we got And the, the Soviets were doing the same thing. How do you think thing. the private sector has been doing since? Yeah, well, that, it, I mean, and by the way, that's why after the Cold War, like everybody stopped caring. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, yeah. We don't it care. It just dropped off. Yeah. It was no interest. No. And the private sector picked it up because yeah. you had people like Elon Musk were well, like, this is cool. We got to figure this out. Yeah. It's interesting to me to see how that kind of emerged and then- uh, how competitive it's getting now in terms of like, you know, who can, who can sort of take the first like regular everyday people out there and like what, you know, where we can set up hotels, you know, on the moon or wh whatever the hell they're planning. Uh, it, I, I'm actually excited by that. That's like the whole interstellar thing, like obviously going into my science fiction geekdom, uh, I'm going to be <laughs> kind of waiting book. for this. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, did you, did you know there's a meteor that is made out of pure, I think diamond. 
Oh, I heard. Yeah. Aren't they trying to get? The, well, yeah, that's, that's like the newest thing. That'll right? motivate us. Right. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go out there and get this. What is got like full lithium or something crazy? I don't something. remember. It has something on it that's like super valuable to us. It was something. I think it was a diamond meteor, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Like is that, literally. Really? Yeah. Like literally. <laughs> <laughs> See, just tell your girl like, yeah. hey babe, <laughs> yeah. if you wait a little longer. <laughs> what is what is the what is the history of that tradition for us? It's like one of the I mean, it's one of those weird things that we do that I think it's like, diamond rings. Yeah, yeah. What's, do they control the market? I know that's like why, a few families right that yeah. own the the diamond mines. And yeah, really yeah. control. Like, the market? did they actually like? engineer that in terms of like that's what I'm public asking. interest that's what i'm asking i like think how, so like what made it popular at what point in our the royals must have set the tone for all this stuff i right? don't think like it was donning themselves in jewelry i don't think it was always traditional that it was a diamond that was the engagement maybe doug can look this up uh when was the diamond when did the diamond become the traditional engagement ring? right because before that it was really about merging um i mean it was like property, at but that I think point, like you I think know, other gemstones were appropriate too. I think before a certain period of time that you could give a you could give a girl a ruby or an emerald or something, and it became diamond. That's the one you have yeah. to get. And I think it was their marketing campaign, if I'm not mistaken. Like you get really? a diamond, I get like three goats. Yeah, it? <laughs> yeah I want to know the history of this. Yeah, 1930s uh, De Beers uh, advertising campaign. So See? De Beers really Beers. did that. Wow, One company changed the way company. we we do this forever. See, seems to be the case. What wow. we're click on that and see what what because see diamond is forever. That's I, like their I'm classic telling you, line. Before right? the 1930s, okay, because this says the 1930s. I knew this before this time. You could give uh, like lots of different types of gemstones. Like now it'd be weird if you're like, hey, will you marry me? And you give your give her fiance. limestone. <laughs> I tried that. Limestone. I tried that. Contrudo was oh, so it. flaky, is it? <laughs> limestone. <Yeah. laughs> it's just a pebble. <laughs> I picked it up one of those nurseries on the way over. Yeah, there. I hear a mood ring. So yeah. I just know. <laughs> oh, I'm good today. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> what does that say, Doug? Did you read what it said? Uh, yeah, it's too detailed. Oh, okay. uh, it's too, too, much too much reading for you. Too much reading. Looks like like so Adam's workout okay, earlier. De Beers, De Beers De, manufactured that's, that. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's impressive. Genius. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, isn't Who, that isn't that just that's got to be one of the most brilliant marketing campaigns of all time? Yeah, and it's like so expensive. Like, man, they just they really did a number on it. So guys. what they did was now who bought into this? Women or men? I mean, I know we both bought into it, but. Like who really made this fucking <laughs> women? Thing? Well, yeah, we were, yeah. We only bought into it because women bought into yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, a, it's not like some guys like, hey, I got this idea. I'm gonna spend crazy money on this rock and I'm gonna put it in there and give it to her. No way, some guy thought of that. Well, uh, according to this, they didn't become popular until 1947 when De Beers, the British company that mined diamonds in South Africa, launched an advertising campaign with the help of Hollywood stars and the slogan "A diamond is forever." Diamond engagement rings skyrocketed in popularity. Wow! Dang, it would be cool it's to see a graph. That, it would guys. be cool to see a graph on like how crazy that has gone. I mean, to go from that's not even a thing that you would you would use to propose to someone to the staple. Oh yeah, you, you feel know, like it's been here forever. Yeah, you yeah, just like assume it's just a thing. I mean, there's even things out there too. Have you heard people say things like you're supposed to do like three, three, three months of a salary? That's mm -hmm. bullshit. That's yeah. all ever. Oh, how messed that, up they is that? Yeah. They got push I remember presents. the first. Are you in that trap? No the push presents. On, push the, present. the, 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 dude, there's this come up with presents. Like, it's all marketing. Opportunities. It's all, Bro, the yeah, three month like, salary one is, if you really think about it, it's fucked up. But brilliant. <laughs> three months salary yeah, for a ring? That's a lot. So you got some dude who's like busting his ass. Like, I don't, how much am I supposed to spend? Oh, the commercial said, <laughs> yeah. okay, so I do the math. Well, okay, I guess I get her yeah. this. Yeah. Is that before or after taxes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Either one is a lot still. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, isn't that funny? See, my wife's counterculture, so I'm going to give her up and be like, hey, babe, here's your here's an engagement ring. It's an emerald or something like that. I think emeralds and rubies yeah, and are better looking anyway. Dude, it immediately loses value too. It's not like you're just going to go hawk it and, and sell it Diamonds? if it doesn't work out. Oh, no. I thought they hold or climb. No? No. Nobody wants a, a used engagement ring. Yeah. I, I mean, they probably can There's some value there. Way, no, I way would think less. That, what, look, I, think they, I think they hold or uh, appreciate, dude. No, no, no. No Yes, no, 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 no. Yes, no way. yes, they do. It depends where you get it from. If it's like... Well, yeah, you get if yeah, if you get some like fucking Sears, like diamond ring or something like that. But if you get like a real diamond <laughs> that's, that's, that's right close now. to flawless... You just crushed somebody right now. <laughs> He's all, that poor oops, bastard. I gotta take this back. <laughs> I'm it taking a, it back. I couldn't think of anything less. I mean, Sears, did they sell? Do they I don't really even sell know diamonds? Sears is a thing. I, I don't think honest. it is a thing. Oh, here 
out of business. Like a car, a diamond is a depreciating asset since it loses a large portion of its value the second you buy it. Sorry, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Think about gold and silver. What? Gold and silver. Gold and silver are silver ap appreciates. Yeah. Diamonds don't. Diamonds don't. <laughs> Yeah, so. Interesting. I I assume that like a uh, a really good diamond appreciated like gold and silver. It doesn't, huh? It's all marketing, bro. They control the market. So yeah. there's like a few families that owned diamond mines, and they only put out so many to make sure that they they because if they wanted, they crash. Yeah, the there's a lot. Yeah, because it's pretty abundant as far as I have read. Is it really that abundant? I've, as far as I read, yeah. yeah. Apparently, if they wanted to, they could flood the market full of diamonds, and it would Keep dramatically it crash. You know, speaking of that crazy stuff that you know. This, it reminds me of what's going on in the economy still right now is that we still have yet to see have you I don't know if you've seen reports on this consumer uh purchasing is still high dude yeah but credit card debt is exploding people are just, yeah, oh, yeah, just no, charging shit I yeah. know but isn't that, isn't that crazy that it, not enough people are scared to slow down the yeah. the spending Bro, bad habits are hard to to break like well, people no, don't yeah, want to get conflicting messaging, you know, constantly. It's like, oh, we're all good. Everything's fine. There's yeah. nothing coming. Yeah. They said this wasn't a recession. Yeah. No, um, they're, people are reluctant to change their lifestyles. That's what I've been reading. Like mm. they're like, eh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and just. You know, I definitely think that part of that out. has to do with, because I remember the psychology of this when I was, you know, in my mid twenties and the house that I had bought at, you know, 300 K was being valued at 500. There's a part of you that goes, Oh, I got 200 K in my savings. Yeah. I mean, that's how I thought that's what, so when I would go to buy something, say a car that like is more expensive than I probably should spend, it was easy for me. Like, Oh, it's not that big a deal. I've got more than that in my savings yeah, in my yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of people I think in the last three to five years have seen a massive increase in the value of their home that are probably thinking the same way. That's the only thing that makes sense to mm. me on what could cause you to keep be spending. We also savings. haven't seen a significant decline in the economy in a long time. It's been it's been like the roaring twenties for a while. Yeah. So you're looking at a whole generation of people who everything was working. For, yeah, everything for quite was working. A while, yeah. And then towards the end there, remember during the pandemic, shit was shut down and people were just making hand over fist on like oh, yeah. NFTs and weird yeah, shit. Just you know? Selling invisible things. Yeah. And it's like, it's this is great. That's why I always trip out when I see like a, you know, a twenty something or even early thirty year old that's like you know, given like all the like huge on Instagram that's given all this advice on like home flipping um, and all this oh, stuff. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, or stop Joey picking. You know, so about like, yeah, bro, real hard the last 12 years to pick a fucking that's, good one. That's uh, right. Was uh, it Joey Swole yeah. doing crypto? Yeah. Crypto yeah. advice. Yeah. I was like, dude, I am out. Like, yeah. I am yeah. completely that's, fucking out. That's, that was so, the sign. That day I sold everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I was that's like, what you know. Bro, there's actually yeah, a saying that goes by There's a, there's a, I think it's a Warren Buffett saying that talks about that. Like when the, once like the general population knows like it's all bad, yeah. then it's going to There's go that one way. meme that's like, oh, this guy's like, you know, before, you know, investing in crypto and it's the guy's hand on his steering wheel. He's got a nice watch and it's obviously a nice car. Yeah, yeah. It's like after investing in crypto and he's holding on to the, like, the uh, front seat paper. of a bus. It's no, no, he's, he's holding on to the front oh, seat of the bus. He's holding the front seat. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, I, I feel bad. Sorry if that happened to you. Uh, but, you know, yeah. The old well, rules. You know, there's really, no such thing as a free I, you can't feel too bad. That's I don't feel too bad. But the people, people that taking the risks, the people that were that were going hard on that were they they did it with conviction too. It's yeah. not like talking they, they shit. Were us yes, they're stupid. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. There was a lot of people that were that were, would say that. I mean, I still get people excited. Bro, my I had somebody call me. me a boomer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on, on on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, this is I don't think this is a great way to tell people how to invest. You gotta stick to the fundamentals or whatever. Okay, boomer. Yeah, that's how you guys used to do it, but this yeah. is the new economy. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, you know, so I'm not sad for that guy. I mean, there's there's boomer. I mean, there's there's some truth to I one hundred percent believe it's going to change and and NFTs and cryptocurrency or more so blockchain is is the future. And and but to be so arrogant to think that because you've read a bunch of articles or you listen to somebody who sells crypto or sells NFT, yeah. to be convinced that this is the one or this is exactly how we're going to implement it for the next 20 Dude, something the years. The smartest people is, uh, couldn't explain it. Yeah. And so it's like, and you, you have some YouTube guy that's like breaking it down for you. That's great. But like, you know, I'm paying attention to people actually have all the money, what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, like, that's I'm not razzle dazzled by, you know, some dude that has good. Cuts. That's, I mean, seriously, some good advice is look at some of the most successful people, like consistently successful. Not they just became successful overnight because they just sold a, a you know, bored ape 
you know, picture or whatever. And then what are they doing? Oh, look, they're taking the money out of the market right now. I think I should probably sell. Or, oh, right. look, they're investing here. This yeah. might be a good so idea. So what I'm, I'm really curious about is what we're going to see with like the companies like Facebook and YouTube and uh, Spotify and Instagram and a lot of these, uh, you know, Silicon Valley based type of, of companies that were built on valuations that were around growth, growth, yeah. growth. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You're not making money. We're growing. Doesn't matter. You're not mm-hmm. making any money. We're growing. And like, do you think that they hit their peak? Do you they think did. Oh, hundred percent. Like, I think like it's forever. I actually think it's gone. Yeah. I actually mm-hmm. think that that time of talking about 15, 20 X a company being worth is over. And I think we're going to see a resurgence of companies like your, like an Apple, I think. So you guys remember I talked about a book called the four and it talked about the four, yeah. the four yeah. horsemen. And my pick mm-hmm. was Apple would be the one to, to survive us. Cause mm-hmm. it was the most cash rich. Really? There's a lot of people. I that, you said, yeah. uh, Amazon back lot, day, just cause they owned all the, um, uh, not no, Am- the servers. Amazon, yeah, yeah. Amazon thinks the cloud. The, the Amazon, maybe I, I might have alluded to the, the the cloud back then and how powerful that might have yeah. been. But you have Amazon. Mm-hmm. You have you have a lot of these companies again that are that are valued off of the growth more so than the actual cash flow. And I just think that's uh, it was a new way of looking at business. We didn't look at business that way forty years ago. 40 years ago, you wouldn't go like, oh, oh, a multiplier of we are adding this many people, you know, that are paying customers. Therefore, we're going to be worth this much. It's like, right. how much money did you make yeah. last year? How much did you spend? Yep. Those people are, are your profits. Eyes your and, profits and compared and to almost. another company's profits is how you didn't, would really didn't compare. We just, didn't somebody just do some layoffs right now? Uh, yeah. All of them. I think I mean, Snap? Did. Am I saying the right thing? Well, actually, look this up, Doug, because I want because this is also what I think is coming down the pipe right now. Uh, like, say the top ten companies laid off. Laid Layoffs or the all the big companies that are laying off. There's a ton right now, um, and then you saw what Elon said right about Twitter, and I think they're all going to follow him. I think he's going to come in. He's going to do the biggest cut, whether it's seventy five percent. Some like things. There's a part of me. This is going to sound mean, okay, but there's a part of me that is like it gets a little happy about people at Twitter getting fired and people at Instagram and Facebook. Now I, I know if you work there, I you know that's but but I got kicked off. So I hope whoever kicked me off against you loses your job. Really, this is all out of spite. That's you know. Uh, so that's that's yeah. what's going on. Well, it's yeah. going to be. But it's I, going to it's, force companies to run more efficiently. It has to. Yeah. And instead of just raising another round and yeah. getting a bunch of money infused and grow, 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 you're actually going to have to go like, oh, you know, what is the average cost of every employee? Are they producing well, this much? How important is this yeah. job? Like, that I could make an argument that I think the social climate is going to be a nice fresh of fresh fresh air because people are going to be like really focused on shit that matters. I hope like paying for bills and like Mm. overhead costs and like, you know, not being super distracted by just like nonsense. I hope. And I, and and I'm, listen, I'm, I was joking, honestly, that's my hope. People lose their job. That sucks. That's really, really terrible. That sucks. It's it's going to be a hard time for a lot of these companies. It's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of people though. I yeah. mean that's the that's the that's when we actually know we're really really deep in the recession. And many times that's usually the last like the lagging the lagging and then 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 they say uh 15 to 8 or excuse me 12 12 to 18 months later is when the bottom is. So we haven't even seen where the unemployment starts to rise like when it starts getting north of 5%, we start getting 5 10% range. And when you start to see inflation come down, when those two cross is when yeah. we, when you're going to start to see the, the real big fallout. Wow. And that fallout should go, you know, 12 to 15 months based off of history. Obviously, we're spec- I'm speculating, mm-hmm. but off of what we've seen in the past. And so we're not even there, dude. We're not even, and we're not dude. even close to. You made me feel great. I, <laughs> so, so, I got to ask you real quick. Oh. Um, what time is it? Oh, I just want to see which one you use. Oh, uh, yeah. Why do you got a weird... What's going on here? So... Uh, you tracking steps at the same time? I, I am. Uh, and, and why I, do you have it backwards? Because I don't care to use it for anything else but that. So um, my sister-in-law works for Apple. So uh, I got this for free. And so I have a very, like a, a very nice, you know, step tracker is basically what yeah. and, and health monitor. So that's what... So it was offered to me. And I said, you know what? How I have yet to use their their whole health 
you know, circle yeah, thing, yeah, whatever yeah. you call. And I'm curious to like how it's accurate. Pretty addictive. I've I've used it. And it has a lot of cool features, so I was interested in that. And because I'm not paying for it, so that's why I had two <laughs> I watches like, on you, asshole, for pointing that out. I had to, dude. <laughs> Nobody was. I was fair, under ankle. That was real fair cool. game. Fair game for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I got. I'll, I, although I'm going to bring that back in style. There was. Do you guys remember when you, we were in like ironically, you're probably right. sixth grade? Where you used to wear two or three watches. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, swatches. I, yeah. It was always swatches. Yeah. Yeah. I had an. I had an Apple one. I watch or whatever. I gave it to Jessica because I see no value in it. She wore it for a while. She took it off because it's like, I just have my phone. What's the difference? So there's a few features on there, but. Yeah. So I'm using it for the health tracker. I just started tracking, you know, and by the way, along since you brought that up, Justin, boy, am, uh, you know, and I say, I've said this before so many times, like, I don't care how long I've been doing this for. Um, you, every time I revisit, you know, using my tools and tracking or it, it, it putting down my food to see exactly what I mean, I'm always surprised somewhat. Like, I'm, it's not like I'm like, I knew it, I was low. Revealing, I knew yeah. I was low, but it, when I saw how low I was, I was like, oh. Chaps? Oh my what were you god! Averaging? Oh, bro, like three thousand. Oh my Ooh. god! Yeah, you know why I'm laughing? Because that's probably it's me. Probably all I'm, of us. I know. I know. Yeah, that that is crazy low. I mean, that is so so low. I I and I know. I get it. I know my day, and I knew I was low, but to see it and yeah. go like, and then to have like a day where actually I was kind of moving around. We went to the the Warriors game and stuff, and then it, for it to not even exceed like 10,000 I went oh my god you're like, all tired yeah I was like <laughs> that was a really active wow. day and I and and it didn't even exceed that I'm all, so it was very enlightening for me to start tracking again and just just become aware of that that like wow I'm not anywhere close to where I should be dude my, speaking my of awareness activity. speaking of awareness and all that I got a message from a family member that's like oh my god you guys are famous I'm like what Sends me a picture of of Adam's Caldera commercial. Oh. <laughs> That's the same. That is the same one. Bro, that I'm I like, up we've the been pod Katrina's. So Caldera must be really put. You know why? You know what it is? Because it's it's face cream, face serum. So it's not like, and, and you have a nice face. Well, no, 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 yeah, no. That's, that's, that's not why. He's got the cherub cheek. It's you know what <laughs> it is. It's because it's a product that's actually hitting outside the fitness space. Mm, that's why yeah. that's and that's why we're because i got it katrina so people who aren't in the yeah katrina's yeah. is a construction you know big old fat guy old dude <laughs> you know what i'm saying he ain't working out he listens now yeah, he ain't funny i know he just is now. <laughs> hey that's me man <laughs> he's not listening anymore no. now <laughs> so, so he's, bro. he's definitely not buying any maps programs <laughs> <laughs> no, I got the, i'm taking my kill dude yeah. out of here use coupon code mass big old fat guy 50 <laughs> for 50 percent off any, in fact, any program. Uh, so yeah so it's it's reaching him because because obviously it's connected somehow. It's fit, the algorithm figured him out for face cream. Nothing to do with fitness. So I think what's happening is that, you know, and Vior is another brand that you don't necessarily, even though that's athleisure wear, so it's kind of closer. But I mean, Caldera is completely, could be yeah. out of our space. I mean, yeah. you could totally You know use, how funny, can I say, yeah. this? I know we're like, this is, sounds like a big commercial, but this is true. None of us used any like face serums or lotions or none of us did maybe wow. doug did did you use anything yeah doug? i did you of course well, you did yeah, look, how, look at his face he looks like a baby none of us the three of us did. Chose. now we all fight over it in the back yeah. who's getting the eye cream who's getting the whatever what's happening i you know why I actually mean, it's because it works you, you, you notice it's yeah. you know it got me you notice a difference i mean the first time i used it i could see a difference had it had it not felt that impactful, I I don't think I no. would have been bought into no, it. No, we got either. sold. Yeah, because no, we, we used it. Yeah, it works. No, no, we told. I, how funny is it too that I ever still remember when we were talking about doing the advertising? We did not think that we could we could carry it. I didn't think that it was something that there'd be enough people interested in it. But I remember yeah. Justin was like, he was like the most excited. No, <laughs> he was the most opposed to like you know. We had to lie like, to him. What like, are we doing? Remember we had, we had to trick like, Justin. We're like, there's gasoline. In like it. yeah, you okay. sell so beauty products. Yeah, <laughs> you got to be the one to do the commercials. Just, yeah. you know? <laughs> Justin, it's made. With, I mean, I'd be the perfect like thirty day trial. Yeah. You know, just Justin, it's made with gunpowder and gasoline. Oh, okay, cool. I'll put it on my face. Hey, well, speaking of commercials since we're doing it right you there was something that you talked about the other day that was related to public goods and i heard oh, you say hold it for public micro goods we have public goods today so microplastics they are doing studies and they're finding microplastics in a majority of women's breast milk <clears throat> and in a majority of babies or like organs like they'll test and stuff Dude. microplastics are everywhere that's so little tiny pieces of plastic 
that were fi- were basically now just is becoming a part of. Okay, so what I would like to see on a test like that is something where they compared like the the mom who you know or the family I should say so m- multiple generations were like I really didn't care they eat they do whatever they use ever, all the formulas yeah. they do everything they don't care yeah. and then like the What's super the, difference? the super hippie mom who was like made the choice to so like they did. all natural 100% everything oh they did they've done that with um organic versus non-organic uh so they'll, they've done studies with families and said okay you guys go organic you guys do conventional and they definitely dramatically reduce the non-organic like pesticide residue glyphosate loads that kind of stuff um so i don't know if they've done anything for microplastics yeah but the majority of the stuff you get the the microplastics you get exposed to are the ones that the the products and shit that you use because you're going to get exposed to some right because you live in the world so how do you know how do you know public goods is free of that so public goods is not that they're free specifically about that but public goods there that's like at the top of their list of priorities is low chemical, good for the environment. Good for the environment is less of these plastics, less of this waste, oh, okay. less of these types of things, less of these harsh chemicals. It's the types of the plastics. Too, and right? there's types, right? There's, yeah. there's certain plastics that we know that, I mean, we just removed, uh, wow, what are they called? Uh, there was that plastic that- BPA? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just, finally, like we know that causes hormone issues and shit in children. Yeah. That wasn't, that was, you know, nonstick, like, Cookware still exists. Mm-hmm. You, for a fact, you use nonstick cookware. Yeah, the traditional stuff. That chemicals is it's going to be all in your it body. It Permeates into the the food and your food. As you cook it. You cook with it. Wow. So that's why if you want to use something that's nonstick, I use like what is it, ceramic coated and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's everywhere. It's everywhere, dude. It's great. Wow. Plastic b- water bottles. So people like to buy, you know, water and plastic water bottles. Do you know that that. There's microplastics in that water Dude, yeah. from the so, processing of the yeah. putting the cap on. I think on that's shit. one of the biggest contributors. I agree. You know, because it's, it's somewhere along the lines. I don't know when it was, like you know, in the 80s or set, like when was it when pla- when water water was bottled and that was a thing? Because I still remember drinking out of faucets and then out of the hose. That was yeah. 90s, bro. That was the, yeah, yeah, because it came it came in in our you know childhood when everybody all of a sudden you had to have like a, a water bottle. Uh, everywhere you that went. you bought, that you bought, it's like the diamond thing. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. We got hustled. The Hard di- the title of this episode: the diamond and the water bottle scam. The diamond <laughs> yes. and plastic yes. hustle. And water dentist. bottle hustle. Right, throw De- them all up De- beers is behind it too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have a, I have an interesting speculation. I love right. you guys. Is like from an evolutionary standpoint. So, do you know that one of the things that can trigger labor? So, and I know this just because Jessica's obviously we're towards the end of the pregnancy, waiting for the Scaring baby to come. Him. No. <laughs> yeah, scare the baby out <laughs> yeah. real quick. No, uh, semen, semen, <laughs> even better. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can combine the two. <laughs> ah! S- scare, no, scare semen. Yeah. Oh my god! Wow, that's how you get divorced. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell did you just throw on me? Maybe, maybe yeah. not. Maybe, maybe no. Not. <laughs> semen. The prostaglandins and there's certain compounds in semen that can induce labor. So this is part of the reason, one of the reasons why sex, mm. they say, you know, I'll have sex. You building up, up your case right now? Huh? It? No, I don't know. Yeah. It's all good there. But <laughs> okay. it, that, that's, and so, so I have some theories as to why, because I was talking about this with Jessica and I'm like, I bet, you know why it triggers labor? Think about it. For most of human history, like a woman who's like close to giving birth, that's a very vulnerable time, especially during the labor process. Mm-hmm. Like you're given birth, like you could get killed. Something could happen. I need someone to provide me with food for the next few weeks when I have this infant that I can't do anything. Mm-hmm. So the presence of semen tells the body, this is my theory. Okay. There's a guy nearby. There's a dude text. that likes you enough that he's going to have sex with you. So <laughs> you're cool. Go ahead and have this baby because he'll probably do shit for you. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Doesn't that sound like a good theory? <laughs> or the body's just already or trying there's to- there's competition. Pre- and, wanting to prepare know. and speed along speed along the, the birthing but process. But why would the semen do that? So because it's basically, it's saying that it's time to make another one. So it's like, get this other one out. It's time to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> That's my theory. Hey, we can't do anything with this. Yeah. Let's get the baby out so we can make yeah, a baby. Along. Yeah, I'm, seriously. I just feel like it, it's like it's it's it, it like it tells her, you know, hey, there's somebody here that likes you enough to have sex with you, so <laughs> he's probably you can have his baby. Yeah. He's gonna stick around. You know what I mean? There's more to semen than you know. That's what I'm. That's, that's it. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Every day, semen. Yeah, it's good for you. High quality ingredients, convenience, great tasting. Organifi's superfood blends make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition 
to your day. So my favorite is their green juice. When I don't get enough vegetables, I'll take a serving of their green powder, and it gives me all those phytonutrients that I'm missing out on. But they have many other products, including plant-based protein powders, a red juice for energy, a gold juice for relaxation and sleep, and much more. Go check out this company. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Troy R. Walker. What are your thoughts on landmines and what are your favorite exercises with them? Hey, aren't you uh, getting somebody in here soon? I was going to say, here's Sal's joke. They're the bomb. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, how you make a joke, but re- re- they take out the responsibility of it bombing. Wow. <laughs> what you just wow, did. You, just, you just piled on. Um, no, Lamma, you're you're like a huge- I'm a big fan. Yeah. yeah so uh, Well, so originally, actually, I had um, one of my guy models was in here. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> It sounded worse coming out please, than even I thought. Can we please sound. clip that, please? Please clip that one. You got guy models? <laughs> I got guy models. I got girl models. Hey. Um, yeah, this, this is literally how it's happening. Coming, 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 coming out of your, your mouth, it's way I'm trying to be I'm honest. That's uh, my problem. Okay, go ahead. Um, keep going. So he introduced me to uh, this Landmine University, which they're doing like a lot of cool sports-specific training and really just like a way to um, – do a safer, less risk version of power cleans and powerful movements yeah. and snatch and, and press. Um, and it honestly too, with, with athletics, um, it, it's a lot of contralateral work that you don't really, it's, it's hard to construct uh, programming for like contralateral type exercises. And so this really plays well into that and is able to kind of um, load uh, a lot of these movements effectively, but it takes a lot of coordination and skill to do so. But I'm excited at what they're doing with the landmines. So based off of that, do you, do you, do you see uh, an increase in popularity coming down the pipe for landmine stuff? Cause do. it really, when, when I was a trainer, it was like, there was like heard three of. movements or something. Yeah, I mean, really never. I, I mean, didn't even I, see one. I, I, yeah, I didn't, like oh. most of my training career. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I saw I a landmine until I got to like the private places like where you were at. Same here. Mm. Way, way really? later. Yeah. They, oh, I, was, yeah, I have a different perspective, obviously. because Oh. Because you're you, in the athletic world. Yeah, the athletic world. Yeah, yeah, no, I never, I never saw a landmine It didn't, stuff. it still hasn't made its way to the muscle sculpting kind of bodybuilding world, but I think it's going to because landmines provide unique resistance. First off, the anchor points on the ground. Yep. You're using a freeway, and tri- like most many landmine, there's lots of athletic movements. So lots of rotational stuff, and you can work on power, which is great for sports. But for even traditional muscle building exercises, very rarely do you have a movement where the resistance is hardest at the bottom and easiest at the top. Right. So, like for example, we have a shoulder press apparatus here. Okay. It's not a landmine, but it's similar in the sense that as mm-hmm. you're doing the shoulder press. The weight is heaviest at the bottom, lightest at the top, which is interesting because I could really accentuate that that full extension. Yep. From a bodybuilding perspective, that's hard to replicate with free weights. It's almost never that way. So you could use landmine exercises to do overhead presses and lunges and uh, back exercises, mm-hmm. like rowing movements. First off, the original landmine, quote unquote, was a T-bar row. Yeah. If you look at bodybuilders, they mm-hmm. did T-bar and they loved the feel. T-bar row is still considered one of the best. Which you still have attachments for that with the yes. landmine. Yes, yes. So uh, I think it's going to become more popular. Yeah, I think I, you're going to find it in the body sculpting, you know, muscle building space. Have you nailed down a day? Because I know he, you, he's going to set up, I think, a certification here and then you're yeah, going to shoot some it content. Should be, should be next year. I mean, they're kind of blown up, um, much like uh, some of these other, well, uh, like, like David Weck uh, does a lot of like um, – work in terms of like contralateral uh, and, and running and um, real sports specific type of uh, content. And so like, I, I, I feel like a lot of that was adopted in with the landmine. And so they kind of combined a lot of that, which is really cool. But yeah, so they're, they're all over the place, but we're trying to set them up next time, sometime in the spring, uh, hopefully uh, next year in here. Who's the other guy that you and I like? I think I shared him first with you. He's, uh, he does all the explosive movement with the landmines, oh, left to right. And he, he catches and balances. God, what's his name? He's yes. got, he bro, does he fantastic does fantastic sports specific Crazy exercises. stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's fun. To, he's really fun to watch. I mean, I've gotten so, so many ideas off of watching some of his. Well, hopefully, we'll figure it out when we finish the episode. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, look for, yeah I'll look for, for it. Sure. But there's a great. You ever try? Have you ever done a, like a. A rear delt row on a landmine, Adam? 
A rear, a rear delt what? So it's a row. So it's like you're doing a, it's almost like you're doing, you're doing oh, a one-arm row. Oh, you do it row. like this, where it's kicked out to the side over here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, either out, yes. Either, yes. Uh, and because the weight moves out, it mm -hmm. in, it yeah. encourages this, like, um, like pulling apart motion, mm -hmm. and you get this really amazing feel in the rear delt that you, I don't really So at Brunel, we didn't have, uh, at least I don't remember having a landmine when I was training there, when I was competing. We, I would actually use the T-bar row. See? Yeah. So okay. I, I use the T-bar row, I'd face the, I would, so it'd be perpendicular to me and then I would and you'd feel in the rear delt yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah no cool movement next question is from Mike Browning one why can strength go up but have no size increase after years of training okay so strength there's a there's a lot there's a few things that contribute to strength one of which is bigger muscle fibers so bigger muscle fibers contract harder and that's going to make you stronger but that's not the only thing that makes you stronger there's also your skill Mm -hmm. So technique and skill, right? How you position your body, leverage, your ability to organize your muscles in an organized way is going to make you lift more. Yeah, you also have- Your central nervous system. Yeah, your, your central nervous system, which sends the signal to the muscles to fire. You can make that, like for example, it's said that the average person can only really summon 60% of the real potential strength. Mm -hmm. Whereas Olympic lifters who are highly trained are closer to 97% because they've trained- their CNS to be able to fire and, and, and really be able to almost uh, express most of their strength because they've gotten those governors out of the way, those safety yeah. governors. Well, yeah, to that point, it, I mean, if you've ever seen somebody do a, a sort of a superhuman feat where yes. they have to lift a car or like it just seems impossible and all of a sudden they have like this like strength out of nowhere, it's really they've removed like a lot of the limiters yep. and the governings that your body keeps you safe with. Um, but they're able to access now that amount of of force. It's under extreme duress. Like there's stories of the mom who like lift the car to save her kid or something like that. Yeah. Um, that that's also true. So your CNS. And then there's also um leverage, like how your body's built, like the attachment points of your muscles. They're like pulleys and levers and <clears throat> You might have better leverage than someone else. So you might be stronger at a lift than your friend, even though they're way more muscular than you are. But make no mistake, eventually, if you continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger and you're you're maximizing CNS output, technique, you know, leverage, all that stuff, at some point muscles will get bigger. So so at some point you're going to see the muscles respond and get bigger. So strength is a very good, it's not perfect, but if it continues to improve over time, you can almost always expect to see muscle growth to follow. There's also the potential that the person asking this question is um, under eating too. Uh, because based on what you guys are talking about, you could potentially get stronger because of more practice, improved CNS, stability muscles coming up, all these, you know, just getting better at the technique. Uh, and yet, uh, under eating or not eating enough to yep. grow. So your body's build. finding other ways to lift more. That's right. So your body is getting more uh, proficient at the lifts, and and so you're seeing strength go up, but you're not seeing size yeah. because you're not feeding the body enough mm -hmm. to actually grow. So exactly, uh, that could also be a potential. So um, I mean, this is kind of inevitable after you've been lifting for a really long time and you've kind of peaked out on your size. That maybe you might inch out a little bit of more strength because of your technique improving. Uh, but if you were complaining to me, if you're a client of mine and you were complaining to me that you're just not growing and we've been training for a long time, I would probably dive into your diet and see how we're, I'm feeding you. Yeah. But initially, sure surplus. initially the strength gain to muscle gain ratio, <clears throat> it looks way different when you're a beginner than when you're advanced. Yeah. Like yeah. if I gained 15 pounds on my bench press now, I would see some muscle from that. A beginner, you gain 15 pounds on a lift, you don't typically see too much muscle because a lot of the strength the beginner gets is just technique, mm -hmm. CNS. Like it's not unheard of to add, you know, 50 pounds to a barbell squat in six months, you know, with a beginner. Like that's, that's, you can do that. Like for, if I gain 50 pounds on my squat now, like you're going to see some muscle on my body. So that ratio of strength to muscle size starts to change as you become more advanced and you start to max out those other things. Next question is from RS Brews 76. What are some hacks to get more fiber in the diet on a consistent daily basis? This Adam, you're you're good at this because um you, you know, you work so 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 much with coaching and bodybuilding and fiber is I mean it's some people would say it's a it's an essential macronutrient. Obviously some people will argue against it, but 
it's definitely connected to better health, better digestion. It's also neglected a lot in the bodybuilding community because of uh, of low carb. Because so many people low carb and carbs typically are where the average American gets their 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 fiber. And so if you don't actively pursue it and you're following like a bodybuilder type of diet, your, diet, your fiber's low, your fiber's low. And so yeah, um, and there's like, there's like what we would think are high. Oh, Oh, high fiber, eat high fiber cereal or high fiber processed, whatever. Yeah. But like, where would you get it naturally? So, I, I mean, I would get it from berries. That's my go-to. I think it is the biggest bang for your buck as far as how much fiber, antioxidant, and then uh, it, and it's ratio to calories, right? So it's not so a ton of calories, but you get not a ton of calories and it tastes good. Like having berries. So I normally would, would, uh, tell a client any to, berry in particular uh, I like blueberries blackberries right any of them are fine though I really? mean uh, pr strawberries are probably the lowest of the high they probably provide the most uh, sugar and most calories in comparison to the other ones in relation to how much fiber content they have but yeah the uh, berries would be a, a, a mixed bowl of berries and then I would do like a, a big sp spinach salad um, in their day and that would boost up their fiber and it would be common I'd get uh, and this became a talking point for me um, more so after my experience in the competitive world because it was so common it was almost always I would take on I normally took on somebody else who had already been with a coach and the coach purely just did the whole cut calorie thing mm -hmm. and cardio ramp up screw up metabolism and stuff and then I would get them and then I would assess and one of the co common things I'd see is these like chicken breasts vegetable diets low carb to to get shredded and i'm like jesus you're getting like no fiber you wonder why you haven't taken a shit in three days yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying like let's have and then i would i would and they and it's funny because i remember originally too that's one of the questions on the questionnaire so, yeah was the last time you took a shit no see i it became one of the first things i would ask but so, you know and which you know i think maybe some trainers find that an awkward conversation but i would because Dude, it's so important for health. Yeah, it is. And it's and it's overlooked many times in the 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 competitive diet world uh as like cuz they're they're all purely calories, looks and that's what they're talking about and so I mean, right away, I would I would ask that, and nine times out of ten, their stool would be off, and nine times out of ten, the simple fix was literally just getting them more fiber. Now you know what's diet. interesting about fiber is there's different kinds of fiber, and more fiber isn't always better, and it depends on the person. For example, people with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome or issues, too much fiber can be poison, can be bad. In extreme cases. Fiber, people react poorly to fiber. That's why you'll see people say, oh, I feel so much better on the carnivore diet, right? Anything that causes fermentation or causes uh, that, you know, that's fibrous, that's digestible in that sense can cause issues for some people. And there's different kinds of fiber. Like I can eat high fiber, like bran or something like that, and that'll mess me up. If I eat well-cooked vegetables, I feel perfectly fine. Berries, I yeah. feel perfectly fine. Yeah. So it's not all fibers created equal. So if you yeah, if what you, is it about that? Because I agree with you. That's the same. That's the same experience that I have. It's like the difference of like a normal stool to a like super loose stool. Yeah. Right. So eating some of the things that you're talking about, like that, would, I would get that feeling from that. Versus if I just have some berries or a big salad like that, I sit. Well, so there's much soluble better. and insoluble fiber, and then there's fiber that feeds certain bacteria and some fibers that can um, can ferment in the gut. Yeah. So depending on the, your gut microbiome, certain. You can eat certain types of fiber, soluble fibers that'll cause gas and bloating. Yeah. Um, and then there's other ones that like I take, so I take psyllium husk um, two or three times every single day. Psyllium husk is a non-soluble fiber. So it doesn't, your body doesn't absorb it, but what it does is it, it, it draws in liquid it, it, and, it go, and it helps things pass through the system. And I find that it just really does a great job for my digestion and uh, people with like gut issues will find that as well. You can also do like flaxseed powder and stuff like that. Mm. So they're not all the same. This is my point with that. Next question is from Guidod3. What are the pros and cons for each of you when it comes to having or not having a degree? Oh, that's, oh a, that's a fun question. Did you see that for the first time <laughs> in a long time? College applicants have I dropped. I did see that. I saw, I think it was Gary V talked about he that. Did. Yeah, 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 he did. He pointed that out. You know why? So this is a conversation that nobody had when I was a kid. First of all, yeah. lay out everybody's, everyone's schooling here between the four of us. What's going on? Well, Doug Shoot. and Justin have formal degrees yeah. and Adam and I barely dro dropouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a BS degree for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You both have degrees, right? Both BS. Doug, uh, what's yours in? BS. In yeah. So I went to business. business. Oh, yours is business. Yeah. And Co yours is Kines or study. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and you did you did you go? You did. I actually, I actually you got your AA, right? Uh, I didn't finish my AA. I'm all, I'm literally like, I think I was. I think you needed 72 <sighs> units or something for your AA, and I had like 58 or something oh, okay. like that. So I wasn't, I wasn't that far off from finishing. Yeah, I did over two years, even though I wouldn't count two years like of like two and a half years of like kind of going to school. Yeah, I th- I uh, took two classes, like literally. Like went in sat by the down, end, by the left. end of this semester it Too normally was about two idea. classes for me. Oh. I, yeah, I started off with always like an over a full load, and then I would just no. I don't mean two them. like classes, like the whole class. I mean I showed up twice. <laughs> oh, no, <too>, yeah, I, <laughs> yes. I showed up a little bit more than that. It wasn't Not very much. It though. wasn't for me because I had a hard. Time I love it. learning. Uh, you guys know that I love learning. I love uh, exploring things. I, I pursue knowledge and pursue information. But getting me to sit down and learn something I don't want to learn, yeah, like you rough. know, what, you you're know what forcing killed? you're forcing a, a square peg in a round. I think it ain't happening. You know what it's killed so me mm-hmm. was so I went to junior college, so I have to confess that it wasn't I didn't have the experience of like a, a state school or a cool university or anything like that. But I remember hearing everyone you know that was much older than me talk about oh college years are so amazing and college is so amazing. Yeah. Everyone t- and then it literally felt like extended high school to me. It was, that's all, except for the teachers didn't give a shit if you showed up. That was the only difference. Like the classes, the stuff was, I was learning reminding me of most of the stuff I just did in my senior year of high school. I was like, yeah. it was clicky, still the same way campus. It was just a, it was such an awful experience that I rem, I, after, and I met simultaneously, you started your career in fitness. Well, yeah. I mean, I actually came over to the Bay Area to finish my degree, to transfer from De Anza and go to San Jose State because its kinesiology department is well known. Right. And I fell into the job. So that actually was the plan was to keep finishing school. So I was still going to power through it as much as I didn't like it. That was just it. I was like, I was cruising back home where I was with my friends and partying and girlfriend and all that shit. And I was like, I need to remove myself from that. I need to come to an area where I know nobody. My grandmother was who lived in San Jose. And so I was like, I'm going to live with her where I have no friends. I have no option, but to focus and get this shit out of the way. And between the time that I got here and the time that the semester started, I got a gym membership and then got a job that was originally going to be part time that turned into full time and the rest was history. Yeah, so I so I I was going to go to school for physical therapy, mm-hmm. became a trainer at 18. Within 4 months I was a fitness manager, was a fitness manager for a few months and then the college season started or whatever. Signed myself up for classes, showed up twice, absolutely hated it. And I remember I had a conversation with my manager and I said I got to figure this out. I got to go to school. And he goes, why? You know, what do you want to do? And I said, I think I want to do physical therapy. He goes, do you want to work in a clinical setting? And I'm like, I didn't even think about it. I was a kid. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't want to work in the clinic. I want to work in the gym. And he goes, show me your paycheck. So I, you know, we had just got paid to show my paychecks. That means you're making more than a physical therapist right now. Do you like what you do? And I said, I love this. And he goes, why don't you just do this? And I said, my parents will be so upset. So my manager, who ended up becoming one of my first mentors, came to my house and sat down, had dinner with my parents. That's so wild. And had this conversation with my parents and me and him tag team my parents. <laughs> we closed <laughs> and we sold. And the deal was my parents were like, because, you know, my parents are immigrants and like, we want our kids to have an education, do all that stuff. And I said, and my, I, I, look, I always worked hard. I was always responsible. So did you give yourself one year like I did? That was it. That's what I did. So I, I, I made the deal. My parents say, let me, ha- let me do this for a year. I'm already making more than a physical therapist is. I love it. Let me do this for a year. If at the end of the year, then it doesn't work out, then I'll. I'll so go I want to. I want to. I want to point out how important that because the the question is pros and cons for each yeah, of us, right? right. So I, something that I think that is so important because we. I remember when you first saw like literally that was it. I made a deal one year. I said if I really love this thing supposedly, and it's supposed to take me where these people are saying it's going to take me, and I know if I put my mind to it and I and I really give it everything I got, then it, you know in a year's time I should know. Yeah. Right. And I just think that 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 is so important because if if we would have just not went to school and had kind of a laissez faire attitude about the direction that we were going totally in life, different total different totally experience different. Mm-hmm. but the fact that you know we didn't even know each other and that that was a very important conversation that you had with your parents and the conversation i had with myself which is i'm giving this thing one year which meant i literally took very few days off in that year i was constantly reading i was constantly learning i was constantly reaching out for people to help me and mentor you me took like, it seriously very very seriously same mm-hmm. here and i think that's the that's the key here is that um if the, when they look at the data and it's like oh if you go to college for if you don't go to college 
What's your earning potential? What they're not controlling for is a lot of people that don't go to college just don't don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. But if you took the people who didn't go to college because they knew what they wanted to do and they worked hard, whether it be uh, they work in a trade or they're entrepreneurs or whatever, they exist, and you control them against the college pe the people who just graduate, I think you'll see a very different yeah. comparison. Yeah. Well, it's like the only detriment really of not is not having the title. Right. Like if you're going on a podcast and you're not, you know, the PhD or yeah. the whatever, right? Like in terms of access of like, you know, in the academic world, I would say that would probably be, do you agree to A hundred percent. And it depends on the field. Obviously there's still barriers to enter. You know, you can't become a doctor without right. formal education. Well, yeah. And I mean, that's kind of my other point yeah. in terms of like the value of actually getting a degree is really if it's very specifically necessary for, uh, you know, the profession that you want to then go acquire. And so I was actually on that same path of trying to get my physical therapy, uh, and then go to school after I went to school. And I just, it just, it was like, again, square peg in, in a round hole for me as well to where I was just like forcing my way to the end in the, the whole time, not really in working my ass off to just prove a point to myself and, and, you know, everybody else that, uh, it was just like, I can do this. And like, I was always overlooked or whatever. Like my brother was the one that it's ever, it just came easy to him and it drove me crazy. Uh, it like school is really difficult for me, uh, in that setting. Uh, so that was really just, it was to prove to myself, like I set out to do this, I'm going to complete it. Uh, and you know, I'm going to see where the chips fall after this, but I readjusted, uh, my focus and kind of was just like, here, I'm just going to graduate and then I'm going to get a real job and then go from there and like, try and like work my way into uh, a career at that point. And it kind of took me in different paths. And I got to the point where I was like in the gym setting again, and I've always loved the gym. And it was, it was just kind of one of those weird things that like, it's loosely applicable, you know, a <laughs> yeah. lot of stuff I learned, like I definitely can kind of think back and I'm like, oh, there's some courses I took that uh, I do somewhat reference mentally. But for the most part, uh, I, I I would see it being most beneficial for somebody that it, it's super specific in terms of like what you need to know in order to be good at your so, job. Okay. Yeah. that now That's all settled. We all agree on that. But personally from you and Doug, I'm really curious, like if you guys had to like list, like these are the pros for going, these are the cons. What does that list look cons like? Cons money. Okay, right away. Took yeah. forever to pay that off. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see, other cons. I would say um, it's just part of, like, that. That I could be, I, well, it's hard to say, right? Because, like, I could say that, like, I could have got further in my career if I would have uh, not gone to school and like knew what I was wanted to do, but I yeah. didn't really know. Yeah. Right. So, Plus you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have So that's technically a pro. I would say a pro would be, it helped you figure out your path. Yeah. Right. Going through all these classes, you probably, uh, if you actually hated what you were learning, you probably would have not came out and fell in the career, in the career you did. Right. So that's it, it, a, right. That, that's a pro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a pro. I honestly, it's, it's me. Cause I love the experience. I have friendships and everything I developed. And went and I was in a bunch of weddings of guys and whatnot that, um, you know, I, I became really good friends with. Um, and so relationship wise, it was definitely positive. There's actually, there's a lot of positives for me because it, it really put me out of my comfort zone. I had to, you know, move across the country, get away, recreate myself, reinvent myself. So it was, it was a bit of like a journey for me in terms of like coming to where I am now. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's really, it's, it's the money that was well, just you destroyed. You could have literally done all that for way cheaper and exactly. made money instead of paid for it. If that, you think about it. That's really know? the whole point. Yeah. You know what? Okay. So I wait, have, wait, I want to hear Doug's. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing your story. Yeah, this is a very, <laughs> well, no, well, I, I have a good point of view because I have, I have kids that are applying for college now, but mm -hmm. I want to hear Doug because that, when you went to college, very different than when Justin went. And yeah. now that my kids are going, it's very yeah. different in terms of the cost. Well, computers. yeah, was, I think it was like $375 a quarter when I went. Yeah. Damn, that's it? Wow. $375 a quarter. And of course, you know, every quarter <laughs> seemed to go yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for like an Ivy League school too? <laughs> no, it was a, like a, it was a, it was a public school. Just, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, for me, I, I wasn't very clear what I wanted to do with my life when I went to college. And by the time I got done, I wasn't still wasn't very clear and I was kind of following other people's paths when I went, but I, I felt like I needed a, a degree, you know, that was like a, a mandatory for me. Yeah. Uh, and so I went and a lot of the things I learned, I mean, I, I, I'll ask me now what I learned and 90% of the stuff I have no idea. 
because it wasn't that impactful for me. Uh, I went to the business school. I had a double concentration in accounting and marketing. Now, the accounting stuff is extremely practical if you're going to be an accountant, which by the time I got done with that program, I had no desire to be an accountant. Yeah. Uh, the marketing, on the other hand, was for me, it wasn't impactful at all. I mean, the stuff I've used in marketing since then has been totally outside of anything I really learned in school. So a lot of that was just kind of throwaway stuff. So I think that's a really good example of stuff that you can learn on your own. Like marketing is something you can learn on your own. You could probably learn it better than you can at a university. Accounting is, a, you know, it's a more practical type of profession. Yeah. So that made a, a lot of sense as far as that's concerned. Now, looking back on it, I'm glad I have the degree. One, I couldn't have worked in Japan, which I did for six years without it. I couldn't have gotten my mm. visa. Yeah. So if you need a job and it requires a degree, then it's good to have it. It was a great experience. I mean, I think the discipline you get from going to class and studying and preparing for tests, I, I think there's some disciplines you learn from that process that you can take into your life as well. But all in all, you know, looking back on my life, the accounting stuff I use now, some yeah. of it, not not to the extent I learned it, but I, I learned a lot of uh, tax information. I took a couple of tax classes at the university, and uh, those were actually a couple of my best classes. The guy I had the class from was actually a practicing tax attorney, and he would bring in cases that he was working on in the real life, oh, in, cool. the, in the real world. And so it was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So tax was actually interesting for me. And I've been able to really, you know, do things for taxes, not only for prior businesses, but even the current business. Well, so I think that is uh, un unbelievably served us, you know, for sure that your background in that because of, I mean, you handle all of that within our business and um, I have, I have no desire to do that part or even learn that part. So the fact that even if you don't really like it as much, you have the most experience and knowledge around it and you just kind of take that yeah. on. At the very least, that's a very know. crucial part of this business. Yeah. And at the very least, you know yeah. what questions to ask. Yeah. Hire, that, that is the yeah. key thing. Yeah. So when you say handle it, I don't actually handle no, everything. You just know how I to interface ask, like, with the bookkeeper, yes. or the CPA, and then I can ask questions. I mean, we have, we have, the we have two different definitions it. of handling. Yeah. I would still call that handling. Well, it's handling. Because <laughs> if, you, did, he, he if you didn't do it, it, if you didn't oversee it, it wouldn't get handled. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not preparing <laughs> returns or anything yeah. like no, that. No, I mean, a, a, a good leader is is not doing a lot of the stuff. He's able to delegate much of what is getting done. But if you did not have that skill set to oversee that, um, it would be a, 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 a gaping hole in our business right Yes, now, I so. don't think tax returns would have made it in for the past eight years. So if you guys <laughs> were to go back now, so all things, if you were to go back and do it again, knowing what you know now, knowing where you're like, would you do it again still, or would you not do it because of what you know now? That's a really tough hmm. question because it was part of the journey. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You, that's all, I mean, that's a weird really question. tough question. Cause it's like, it's like asking you, like, I'd would you change do. anything about yeah. your child? I mean, you can't cause it's who you are now. So that's really tough. I felt it was necessary for me individually. Um, to you know put me where i am today but it's just yeah like i it was all part of development yeah the market's so different now that's the, that's the big thing the reason why this is a question people ask now is the cost of the product is so expensive that now people have to do a market analysis they didn't have to necessarily before before it was just get a degree and they could organize your education for you especially before the internet right doug you want to learn stuff it was harder to organize and find information. They would they would facilitate it for you. Yeah. And the cost was so low, it was really a no-brainer. Today, it's so expensive. This is a conversation. So I have kids that are going to, I have a son that's going to college and I have a daughter that'll be going in, you know, four or five years. So I have to really consider this. And what I tell my kids is, yeah, college is great if the, the degree you get has market value that's worth more than the cost of the degree. Otherwise... Yeah. If you want to learn something, which you can learn very, it for free. Which is not very much anymore. There's not a lot that You're that, right. that, that degree. A hundred percent. There's there's very few jobs, unless it's very specific, that the 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 actual degree will you know, pay for itself otherwise, through a Otherwise, career. if you're gonna spend, you know, fifty thousand dollars or you go to like a really expensive call, hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and you get a degree in something that has no market value, you can learn the same stuff if you're really passionate about it for free. Mm -hmm. Because the internet, it makes it so easy. So it make and meanwhile work well, a job and actually paid. make money. Yeah, I was gonna say like now they have uh, opportunities yep. like at 
Apple, Facebook, where you could come in and, and it basically uh, get paid as an intern and like work your way up through the rankings, learn everything you need to learn and grow in, within that framework. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's different, it's a different landscape now. So you come back to that question. Like if it, if I was in this setting now where yeah. there's more opportunities where I didn't have such, you know, high overhead to, to have that experience, I would have chose the less uh, expensive path for sure. So yeah. that's funny because then the reason why I'm asking is because I actually have the opposite feeling. I would go, I would go, I would, if my, if I had the money and the resources to say, go to, you know, a, like a good, a big name college, I would go, but my reasons would be different. Uh, one of them, obviously, selfishly, would be for the experience. I would just be a fraternity. No, I would not. I would not be a fraternity. <laughs> so rated. No, not only that. I'm the type of person that like I I start. You want to start a fraternity? Friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, maybe I would start one. Yeah, yeah, you'd be like I me. Would. Like they, I was an honorary member just because I was like lived in a house that was right next door. So they <laughs> oh, would be really? at all the parties, and I didn't have to do any of their secret nonsense. I actually think one of the most beneficial things that nobody said about going to college is actually the networking that you get so i mean i and i think of like for example mm -hmm. katrina's uh last job wow. she worked for jj albany's one of the biggest construction companies in the bay area uh, i think they i think they're in a thousand plus employees a ton of employees and uh it blew my mind when i was walking through the office one day and and, and introducing and meeting everybody for the first time and uh, at katrina i was telling her oh man everybody seems like they're such good friends with that she's like oh yeah they all went to Bellarmine. This one went to Bellarmine. This one went to Bellarmine. This one. They all went to the same school. Yeah. And it's a you know a prestigious school. A lot of smart kids are going to come out of there. So I think that there's a, a lot of value. And I don't know how many times I've seen that before where somebody is working with somebody and they went to college together. They were college buddies who, when he got done with his degree, called him up and said, and so it's, so you know, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. And being connected to other educated people that had other opportunities, I think there's a lot of yeah, there's leverage yeah. and and potential in that there's total you potential Adam in there. skull and bones huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> in all the secret With the bush societies. family or whatever yeah. no there's there's definitely that Real but for the average person you know because you're talking about like like Ivy League colleges where you make the real connect. Like go to Stanford, go to Harvard. Like you're going to potentially make some yes, yes, totally. But like, yeah, I would not waste my time with the, vast the path majority, I was going, which is junior college and then some cheap. But state the vast college, majority of people, for sure, you know, not. they're not going to do that yeah. because either they can't get in, it's too expensive or whatever. Yeah. And so what's happening right now is they're doing a cost benefit analysis. Yeah, but it's so important though. Back to my original point that I said is that. And the same thing that actually both these guys said for them, that it provided this structure. They didn't know what they wanted to be. And I think that at that time in your life, when you're like 18 years old, it's such an important thing to, to add. And if the, and why you and I had such great success. We knew what we wanted. Was, we yeah, we had a, a very clear goal yeah, and we there. put we put our head. We, not only did we, we had a clear goal, we like were, we had a timeline even. We would say like, I got to crush it in a year. Yeah. So we both applied. That had to be a massive reason why we both saw the success we had as yes, young as we did. But was that's, because that's true for both. Like whether you go to college or you don't, if you don't have that attitude and focus. Yeah, but college gives you four years to, to not have that focus. Bro, there's a lot of, there's a lot of Starbucks oh, baristas there's that a lot, have degrees. There's, oh no, there's a lot of guys that go to college and they fuck it off for four years and they get out and they're still high and drunk from the four years yes. they, and they're still at zero. You're right. Yeah. But then there's a lot of guys like both of them who kind of figure it out and then they get yeah. out and they fall into something that yeah. they do really well for themselves. I think that- So here's my question. Do you think that the attitude, if someone has the right attitude, it almost, in my opinion, doesn't matter which direction they go. They're going to do well. If you have the right attitude. Yeah, no, if you- yeah. If you're de if you do not want to go into being a lawyer or yeah something a, that requires requires right? that okay and you're trying to contemplate school but you are a highly motivated person where if I you're the type of person where if you you call me up and I said read this book then this book then this book and then that book and then get back to me and then we'll move from there you're the type of person that will go execute and do that you're gonna be fine yeah. Because uh, that is what I learned by not going to college, and, and and I learned the hard way through hard knocks of failing and getting back up and failing, is when once I found that thirst for knowledge like that, and then and, and that started to really accelerate, and because then I could I could focus on exactly what I wanted to learn, and then look at look for the best yeah. books, the best people in that space, the leader, and start to consume. All that, and then in in a relatively short time, I could go from somebody who knew very little about a subject to knowing quite a bit. Yeah. And 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 if so, if if you're the type of person that 
that fires you up, you will go after that, you'll go do that, then yeah, school's a waste of time totally. for you because you could be way more, you could get a lot more done. You be efficient, done. effective, you can make money while yeah, you're you, you don't it. need to be wasting your time in history 101 because you've just consumed four books on marketing or, you know, you, yeah. it, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, so- And today it's, it's a weird climate, right? Mm. Information is super accessible almost or totally free and higher education is super expensive. So their 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 products are losing value uh, left and right, which is why we're seeing the drop in admission. It's an interesting time. Um, I think this is the beginning of the end of traditional education. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's going to end tomorrow. I agree with that. But I think in 20 yeah. years it's going to look very different totally. because it doesn't make any sense for a lot of people. So. I do wish people uh, like learned more history, though, so we didn't keep repeating I these know. stupid <laughs> mistakes and fall into propaganda. Or stop rewriting history. But there you go. Absolutely. Look, if you like our podcast, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.